Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with episode 6 of Link Click. We start the second half of the series. Um, or of the season, at least, because there will be a second season. Um, as I keep bringing up. <laughs> but, uh, we have episode 6, and last we left off, Depression. We got a big three-parter in, in which uh, Shashi just did not end out well um like ev everything worked out all, all like all together with the the job but with what they had to do shao she was not in a good place after it, it 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 bothered the shit out of him there was personal connection there and he was just in a very bad place mental in terms of his mental health. Um, and I think it's pretty obvious that Lu Guang gets it. Like, he understands why it's so affecting to Xiaoxi. But at the same time, you also have to acknowledge that he is a little... Not really colder to it, but I would say less affected he, he's definitely more the logical type while um and i've said all this before but xiao Shi is the emotional type and it, it it works for their jobs for what they specifically do xiao Shi going into these people's memories into the, the the shadows of their minds and everything connecting with their emotions and you know serving to fulfill their clients wishes it's like yeah it makes sense it works while lu guang being more um logically minded allows him to be able to guide xiao Shi through things to lead him along the right path that will help achieve that mission it it makes perfect sense but as a person who is more of a Shao Shi in this kind of situation, it's like I am like so heavily like feeling with this series that it's like every time I see an episode, I just like get really, really emotional. Um, like, the series has made me cry. It's made me really, like, physically feeling upset. And it's just... It's insane. And, and I, I've, I, I've been bringing up in the first half of this series as we've gone along, in the first half of this season, that this has just been captivating me like none other. It's just been... It's been gripping me that strongly. And I still stand by that. Um... Oh, oh my, excuse me. I still stand by that. This has been excessively gripping to me. It's just, again, because of my own emotional nature, I, I'm tending to really, like, like hit... I guess just connect with the, uh, with the stories and the characters and everything, even if I haven't gone through exactly what they have. It's like just the emotions and ideas of it I can connect to and um, compare it to my own experiences. Uh, but yeah, it's like this series really, really is doing it for me in the best possible ways. And I'm hoping that that continues to be the case in the second half. Because we left off, uh, Shaoxi and Lu Guang were going to take a break. Um, they're they're going to take some time off because of how how fucking much Shaoxi was affected by all of this. It, it fucked him up. It, it it fucked him up, and rightly so. Like I I can't blame the kid. Um, but yeah, it messed him up, and so he needed some time off. But unfortunately for him a cop showed up at the end and it's like oh shit what's this about 
Um, now, I was suggested to also check out uh, episode 5.5. Um, but for, from my experience, those episodes are usually just recap episodes. Like, that maybe have, like, a small bit of new stuff in them. But aren't usually necessary watches. Like, you could miss out on... You, you would miss out on nothing if you skipped them. Um, I, I, I just really didn't see the point. Because I, I feel like that's going to be the case. It's going to be one of those, like, recap episodes that doesn't really do much of anything. Um, it might have, like, a little thing here and there that connects into, into it, but... It's like, it's it's not going to be, like, important to the story and everything. And I kind of don't want to break up the flow of things right now, if I'm being honest. Um, because, like, a recap episode at this point would feel like just... I don't want to break up the flow of everything that's going on. I, I don't want to lose that connection that is, like, forging. It's... I, I feel like it would just... It would be bad timing especially with uh a cliffhanger last time to break that up with something in between so i i just feel like that's a little bit of bad timing on the uh the animes uh or the dong Wa's part um so yeah um, and I'm not saying it's a completely useless episode. I've seen some recap episodes that are pretty fun. Um, Avatar and Legend of Korra, great examples, obviously. Um, but, yeah, it's just... I just, I, I don't want to break up the flow of, of the series right now, and I'm just not really interested in a recap episode for this. I don't need it. I feel like that's, uh... It's just something that I'm not really, like, needing. I, I don't know how else to put it. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see where this goes from here. Um, and just wanted to mention real quick, with all the yawning and everything, um, that's something I usually do, but it might be on, like, a bit of a bigger scale today because I am tired. <laughs> I am really tired. I had almost no actual sleep last night. I just dozed off, like, periodically because I was trying to download something. And, yeah, my my uh, Chrome specifically has been acting up lately. Not my computer. It's just specifically Chrome. I don't know why. I don't know how to fix it, but it's been going really slow. And at times, it's even been freezing almost completely. And indefinitely to the point where I've had to just bring up task manager just to close the damn thing down and so I could bring it back up it's been annoying and because of that I literally spent like all night trying to get one video because I already had this one downloaded but I was trying to get uh, one the uh, for the other thing today and it's just like for some reason, it just, it really would not, uh, it, it really did not want to download properly. So I, I just, I was trying all night and I was dozing off randomly periodically throughout and never stayed asleep for long. And then just tried again and, and kept going like that. So it's like, I am tired. So I apologize for all of the yawning that's going to commence. Whew. Excuse me. And um, just if I seem tired in general. Um, but in the meantime, let me know in the comments uh, below. Um... How have you been enjoying this series? Like, what is the, the big highlights for you regarding this? Um, and we're just going to get started and hope for the best. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. 
Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. <sighs> I was talking in the pre-thoughts about this show having made me emotional and stuff and me like connecting with things and things really hitting me hard and then this episode has to go and prove me right. <laughs> it's like you already have this setup of a kidnapped child and parents still searching three years later. Like, that's already tragic and, like, sad enough. And, and especially with where my mind goes based on, like, real-life accounts of shit like this happening. It's like there's there's many different accounts of as to what could have happened. And, and what where the kid could be now if he's even still alive. But in the cold open, you meet his parents. His father seems like a nice, normal guy. The mother seems extremely anxious and doesn't seem to do well in, like, high-pressure situations and everything, but is, you know, trying her best. But then after the fact, and, like, three years later and everything, you see what has happened, and you see that she's just completely broken and it has become obsessed with the show that her son loved because it's like all she has left of him and it's like it broke me it just completely broke me like i i had to pause the video because i i was not okay and i'm even just thinking about it now it's like it's making me tear up it's just a parent breaking from a child's disappearance or death or whatnot just it it's extremely tragic. It's extremely tragic, extremely, like, heavy. And it's like, you go from this three-parter that centers around um, getting this, uh, this guy's goodbye messages to his friends and family so that he can have peace and closure. And how badly that affected Xiao Xi. How it broke him. And then you go straight into another multi-parter um, about uh, about a child disappearing and a mother just m mentally breaking from it. And it's like, fuck this show. It's like, I am... <laughs> I'm not okay with this. It's like, you're not allowed to do this shit to me. <laughs> In all seriousness, it's like, this is truly something special. The fact that e even prepared for it, even though I'm prepared for this kind of shit at this point, it still can break me. It, it, it still can catch me off guard in ways that just that just completely destroy me emotionally. And I mean that in a very positive way. I, I want to make clear. I, I, I do mean that positively. Um, I've, I've always kind of said it on the channel, but I, I kind of live by this uh, credo with my reactions to where it's like, if something can truly make me cry, it's something special. If a movie or a series or whatever I'm reacting to, like, really makes me that emotional to where I cry, but, you know, for th these kind of reasons and stuff, it's like it's something special. It It's had a profound effect on me.
And I, I always hope for those kind of shows. I always uh, want anything I react to, to to touch me that deeply. And occasionally we get that. And this is definitely one of those shows that has just just touched me in ways that I really didn't expect. Like, when I saw the opening to this, because that is where this all started, I just really liked the opening and I wanted to see the series. When I saw the opening to this, it's like, this opening is fucking fantastic, but I'm afraid that this is going to be another one of those anime where it's like, the opening's fantastic, but the actual show is just blah, like Neon Genesis Evangelion, or um, Beastars, or, uh, God, what's that other one called? Mind is blanking on it. Uh, Angel Beats is another one. That wasn't what I was thinking of, but that works. Um, but shows that it's like the opening is just so damn good on. But the actual show isn't really living up to it. And I was worried that this was going to be another one of those kinds of cases. And instead, this is more akin to Carol on Tuesday. And I say that with the absolute greatest praise. Because, for those who might not have known, Carol on Tuesday is my second favorite show of all time. Only after One Piece. And it's honestly surprisingly close. Considering I've been into One Piece since the 4Kids dub first started airing. Like, the fact that I can say that Carol on Tuesday is that close as it is, is already a huge compliment to Carol on Tuesday. But then saying that this is kind of on that same level, it's like that's also a massive compliment to the, to Link Click. And, and if you think about it, it, like both of them made me cry in just the first episode alone, and moved me emotionally ever since. I absolutely adore both series. And I think I, I said it before, but it's like Link Click at this point would have to fuck up the the last bits of this series so badly to really change my mind on all of this. At this point, it's it's it practically almost guaranteed to be in my top five favorite shows. Maybe even top three. It's very possible. It's, but it it is going to depend on how it sticks the landing. How good it ends, at least for the season. Um, but, like I said, it would really have to fuck up to like make any, any notable negative impact on that. Um, because it's like, this is just really damn good. Um, yeah, it's just... I, I, I had a couple theories while watching this too, and they got pretty quickly proven wrong. Um, it, it's interesting though. Because one thing caught me, caught my attention as well. Um, she said that she had seen the kidnapper taking this kid away. And then we see where she was at during all of this. And I guess she could have seen them being led away. She just didn't see it happen at the scene where he was originally taken from. That's what I was thinking originally, um, that she was at the scene, like, by the shop. But no, she was... Uh, she was a distance away and had just seen them walking by, I guess. And she just recognized the kid later on in the in the flyers. So I, I I misunderstood a little bit there. But there were there was also a part of me that was theorizing something that I, I 
honestly do not believe could have been the case because China, <laughs> let's be honest, um, they're not the best towards this kind of topic. But there was a there was a brief bit there where my mind was going like with specifically before it said she had seen the the kid being taken away her reaction to hearing about this kid and everything and just kind of how things were going i'm for a brief moment there i was i had it in my head is she the boy is she dodo or dow dow it might be dow dow um for a brief moment there i was wondering it's like do the but then but then multiple things told me no like almost right away one age <laughs> That was only three years ago. She's not like seven years old. Well, probably eight, actually. He was probably five years old there. Maybe. Hard to say. It's hard to say with animation. But yeah, the point is she's not that young. It, it, it's literally impossible for that to have been her if it was only three years ago. But also, also, it's like, it's also China. <laughs> And I don't believe China's too great with trans people. <laughs> if that was the idea, that was the idea I was kind of thinking. Um, and, and I think I was kind of thinking that because like of uh, stuff like Alice in Borderland, which has a trans character in it. So that, that was kind of like where my mind was at, but different kind of show, different country and everything, different uh, handling of LGBT stuff so yeah <laughs> it, plus again the age doesn't line up anyway so I, I figured it out right away and I, I didn't say it because I figured it out right away that I was stupid and I was wrong it's just I guess I just always hoped to see stuff like that in uh, shows so um, yeah it was just it, that was on me completely <laughs> Um, but yeah, we see at the end that Shashi runs into her in the past because since he couldn't, uh, since the footage was via a CCTV camera, he couldn't go back and take the place of the photographer. He came back as himself, which can cause a lot of problems, obviously. And as we see at the end, when he, uh, comes across his, uh, his friend there, it's like, oh boy, oh boy. This is going to be problematic. Especially when she says, like, how can you be here? It's like, that's bad. <laughs> um, how is he going to try and explain this away? Um, this could be a problem. This could be a problem. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Because um, this is presumed to be before... They opened up the studio and everything. So, they they don't do what they do yet. So she wouldn't know about all of that yet. So, yeah. Uh, either way, this was definitely a great first episode of this next uh, multi-parter. Um, and I'm excited to get into more. Um... Uh, obviously we'll get to them as they continue um as we continue along with this we only did one episode this week i think we did two last week uh maybe three i did a, I, I think i did a lot last week um but either way uh yeah I, i'm excited for more but that's all for now so let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and for the time being i'm connie and i'm signing off see y'all next time